Carib Wave EWS Early Warning Systems is a annual exercise um, under the auspices of UNESCO. St. Lucia, under the National Emergency Management Organization, will be taking part in this international exercise because it is up to NEMO to ensure that all systems are in place, especially our communication systems, in case of a tsunami, an impending tsunami. Um, by virtue of the fact that we are vulnerable and where we are geographically, um, we cannot say that we will not ever have a tsunami. So we are trying to prepare the residents and citizens in the event that we have a possible tsunami. The exercise is expected, is scheduled to take place on March 23rd at 10 a.m. sharp. Um, at that point, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, which is located in Hawaii, will notify the folk warning point, which is the San Lucia Med Services, who will in turn notify NEMO so that we can disseminate the warning um, information to the citizens. So the test would follow that procedure and then we would in turn utilize all our communication um, systems to alert people. But we will be informing that it is a test so that we don't have any sort of panic. It is important um, for us to, to have this exercise. You want people to be familiar with what to do in the event of a tsunami. A tsunami does not give you much warning. Um, depending on, especially underwater, um, tsunamis triggered by underwater events. You have probably, you know, Kikan Jenny, Mount Pele, less than 30 minutes. And you have to factor in the, the information coming out from the, the sources I indicated, Pacific Tsunami, Met, and so on. So you still end up with less warning time to the public. So you need to know what to do on the spur of the moment, um, not to pick up, um, pack your bags at that time. You don't have to pack bags. You don't have time for this. You need to run to higher ground. So we want people to be able to be sensitive to that and to know what to do in order to save their lives and that of their families. The simulation will help us identify our gaps, for instance, where we are weak so that we can improve and also our successes that we can build on where our communication system is concerned. Okay, the notification of the exercise will come through various means, um, SMS messaging, the social media, cap.cap. .cap. Um, we are hoping that we can pull in the, the other media like the radio stations on board and also to receive some sort of feedback from the public. Uh, we are going to try to put in a Google Forms uh, where they can fill in and submit it so that we get the general feedback as to whether um, the message was received loud and clear and whether persons understood what they had to do. We would hope that we can have um, frequent simulations, um, tsunami simulations, and maybe take them to the communities themselves. What is the process when a tsunami is detected, not necessarily in the... Well, let's be specific to St. Lucia and our region. What is the process when an alert is signaled? Tell us what happens. That information is sent to the director of MET or the MET services, who will in turn contact the director of DEMO. And then that's the trigger for the calls for the relevant persons to be made on the approved list of persons to be contacted. That's really how it starts. Well, we're going to be testing communications for this exercise to see how quick persons get the, ex get the information and how quick they respond to whatever the text message is saying. So we're going to test all forms of media, social media, radio communications, SMS, mm -hmm. social, every aspect of communication we have in Central, including the ham operators, the CB operators. So the intention is once that trigger is received, the calls will be made so that the public can be notified to go to higher ground. Tsunamis don't necessarily give you advance notice? They do not give okay. advance notice. A tsunami is not good. Unlike a hurricane or some of the other hazards we have, with the exception of earthquake, a tsunami, you will not know. You will hear of a volcanic eruption somewhere else, which may trigger it out as well. So there is no notice. That is why the Pacific Tsunami Warning System is going to contact MET, and that is why it is the chronological order in which you get the message and how it is disseminated. So you will have no time for preparing in advance. You get the information now, it's moved now. 
Martinique to the north with Mount Pele, Kick and Jemmy to the south of the island. Both of them showing signs of activity. Same what happened in St. Vincent where there was pre-warning, you may not get any from Kick and Jemmy or Mount Pele. So it happens now, operate now. The way you practice is the way you're going to play at the end of the day. So it's just letting persons know we, like any other island in the Caribbean, are susceptible to a tsunami hitting us. And they have said that we have had in the past and we have written the big one. So these are just preparatory um, procedures put in place to ensure the population is ready. Move to higher ground. Contrary to popular opinion, look around the world what's happening now. I mean, Turkey had this large earthquake and persons were expecting tsunamis thereafter. There was one in the US where they were expecting it. There is an, a reasonable expectation that after one of these traumatic events, there will be a tsunami. Why not prepare? We 238 square miles, 180,000 plus. A lot of our communities are along the coastlines of St. Lucia. With this simulation, it will be the northeastern part of the island. So when it happens to the north of Martinique, whatever time frame is given for it to hit St. Lucia, you only get that one message, tsunami, move to high grounds. You're going to stay and debate and say, well, it happened in the 60s, it's not going to happen now. Move to high ground, see what it is and complain after, as compared to being caught in it. So the intent is to have as many solutions as possible, and many persons on the island, if and when they get that message, move to higher ground.